We're here to idea you, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, and create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Millingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science-themed poetry. After all, we could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found that bees cannot taste even lethal levels of pesticides. Stripy sailors weave through scattered skies as clouds of poison linger overhead. In our gardens of deceit, their hairy knees graze vibrant petals laced with harm. Every bloom a shrouding mask of certain muted death. Venom's tasteless debt in every honeyed kiss. This poem is inspired by recent research published in the journal eLife, which has found that bees cannot detect common lethal pesticides in nectar, risking inadvertent consumption and population decline. Bees play a crucial role in pollinating many of the crops we rely on for food, but their survival is threatened by the use of pesticides in agriculture. One significant danger they face is the contamination of the nectar and pollen of flowers with insecticides, which can poison them. There has been ongoing debate and inconsistent findings about whether bees can actually taste these harmful chemicals in the nectar, and if they can, whether they are able to avoid it. This issue is vital because if bees cannot detect pesticides, they may unknowingly consume them, leading to detrimental effects on their populations. In this study, researchers focused on understanding how bees, specifically the buff-tailed bumblebee, respond to pesticides in nectar-like solutions. They used advanced techniques combining food aversion assays and electrophysiology, the study of electrical properties of biological cells and tissues, to investigate if bees can detect pesticides through their mouthparts. The study revealed that bees did not avoid eating solutions with various concentrations of common pesticides, even when these concentrations were lethal. Surprisingly, only extremely high concentrations of pesticides caused any change in the activity of the bees' taste neurons, These findings strongly suggest that bumblebees cannot detect or avoid pesticides at concentrations typically found in fields using their sense of taste. This puts them at high risk of consuming these harmful substances when they collect nectar from treated crops, highlighting a significant concern for bee conservation efforts. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. Stripy sailors weave through scattered skies as clouds of poison linger overhead. In our gardens of deceit, their hairy knees graze vibrant petals laced with harm, every bloom a shrouding mask of certain muted death, venom's tasteless debt in every honeyed kiss. In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading The Bees by Bruce McKinnon. Bruce McKinnon is an American poet and educator. His poetry collects of mystery schools won the Washington Writers Publishing House Prize in Poetry for 2007, and his poems have appeared in Boulevard, Hayden's Ferry Review, Indiana Review, The Simony Review, and other publications. He teaches creative writing at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. The Bees by Bruce McKinnon One day the bees started wandering off. No one knows why. First one doesn't come back, and then another and another, until those who are supposed to stay and guard the hive, those who are making the royal jelly and feeding it to the queen, those who form different parts of the great brain, must put down what it is they are doing and go off in search. 
having no choice, not if the hive is going to survive, and where do they go? Each one vanishing, never to be seen again, off wandering in the wilderness, having forgotten how, forgotten what it was they were after, what it was that gave meaning, having known it at one time, now a veil drawn. Is it that each one is a cell, a brain cell, and now they're failing one by one, plaque to Alzheimer's, or the way the cells in the esophagus will begin to mimic the stomach if the acid is too intense, if you're sleeping and the valve won't close, a lifetime of eating and drinking the wrong things, these cell compensating, trying their best, but opening the door to these other cells, the wild ones, the ones that call those bees out there somewhere lost, having nowhere to return at night, their search, but nectar fruitful, their small saddlebags full, but no one to go home to, no home, no memory of home. It's as if they'd stumble into some alternate world, one looking just like ours, but a glass width different, just a fraction of sunlight different, the patient waking up, finding herself wandering, someone leading her back to bed, but there is no bed, confusing of the hive they call it, and the hive dies. Each bee goes down, each light goes out, one by one, blinking out all over town, seen from a great height as the night ages, darkens, as you're parked in your car with your own true love, until it's just you two, and the stars, until it's just you. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.